St. Louis James. St. Louis James. What's up, John? How y'all doing? We're doing so good. I, yeah. I love St. Louis. My my best friend is married to a guy from St. Louis. So at the wedding, I don't know whose suits were 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 more popping. It was it, it was a fashion show. Uh, y'all step. <laughs> and I, and I, I got relatives in Pontiac, so we used to always drive up and go through Detroit Telegraph Road all the way out. <laughs> Straight to Yak Town, huh? Yeah, yeah. Eight mile, nine mile road, always. Yeah, love it, love it. But you know what? Let's talk about this mystery series you got on BET's Plus, Deara from Detroit. Today I have the star and creator, Deara Patrick. And I got to watch Deara. that. John, yeah. Deara, right? Deara. Deara. It's okay, close. Deara. Okay, thank you, Deara. And John Chafin, if I catch you at my house at 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to try and wick <laughs> on you, man. That's all I've got to say. Diara, let's talk about the series and how you got started. Oh, wow. I got started, you know, I've always been sort of writing and acting, even when I was a kid growing up in Detroit. But when I came to L.A., I was acting. And it was funny when I would go out for pilot season or something, I would read the scripts and I would think I have notes. <laughs> like, I think I think, could I change this a little bit? Um, and so it, that was kind of revealing my calling was to really do both. And I eventually surrendered to that and started writing as well. And it was a long journey. Um, and then eventually Kenya Barris invited me to come with him to BET Plus or sorry, to BET Studios, which was a new initiative um, to create premium black content with driven by by black creators. And I jumped at the opportunity and we and here we are today um, with this with this first show from BET Studios. So how did John get involved in all this? Let's talk about that. John? I knocked him over the head and said, you got to be in my show. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I still got a lunch back there. You know, At three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that part was, was real, but it was reversed. I had the gun. There you go. You did. John, yeah, talk about everything. your involvement in your character, man. Man, it's just, a, it's you know, Diara is like my sister, you know, we, we did Perry Mason together and, and she hit me up after that and was like, John, we got to work together again, you know, and I was like, look, I'm jumping off whatever bridge you jumping off of, so, <laughs> you know, um, and it, you know, everything, you know, the stars align and, and it worked and the character is one that I really am excited for the audience to meet because what's on the surface is not necessarily uh, what's below. You know what I'm saying? You really get to to see this man evolve and show who he truly is on the inside. I'm a thug with a therapist. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> so that lets you know that there's a lot going on than just robbing folks at three in the morning. You know, but um, yeah, she 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 uh, created a. Uh, a very well-rounded uh, renaissance man that, you know, I was grateful and blessed to bring to the screen. Which is interesting because Diara, I'm going to talk about that date <laughs> and how you got ghosted. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, because I'm looking at the, the beauty salon scene. I said, you know what? I think a lot of sisters are going to relate to that. Talk about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an epidemic out here. I, I've 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 been married for a while, so I but I hear about it a lot. So many people they go on a date, and if they don't want to deal with you again, they never really they never tell you to your face. They just disappear. And so I was hearing that story a lot from my girlfriends, and I thought it would, was just an interesting a interesting point that we're at in society. And I wanted to to shine a light on it and talk about it because I think it's kind of messed up. Yeah. What do you think? I do. I think. I do. I think the young folks are so used to it. They don't even, they ghost their jobs. They ghost their friend. Like they just ghost. But I come from the generation where like, shouldn't we have a conversation? Um, so I thought it was an interesting thing to shed light on and, and get people talking about. You know, I thought it was interesting too with the little kid uh, who didn't realize he was fighting for love. I really like mm. that. I, I actually enjoyed that scene because we're, yeah. he's a young man of, of maybe what, fifth, sixth grade? And here he is yeah. fighting for this young lady. Yeah, Talk they're seventh it. graders. Mine, I have a nephew and he sent me a picture once of a girl at his college. And he said, Auntie, have you ever seen a more beautiful specimen? 
Mm. And it was just something about, I thought that's so poetic. I mean, her boobs were enormous. So I was like, okay, <laughs> okay, Joe. But I just took that away. This like, rom it was so romantic the way that, and poetic the way he put it. And I want, knew I wanted to put that in a character's mouth. And I found the opportunity in this, in this pilot script. I'm sorry I'm laughing so hard because John was laughing so hard when you said that. <laughs> it's so funny, right? We, we know, yeah. <laughs> we know, we know. We know that's a beautiful question <laughs> right there. Good, good. Yeah, I'm looking at her eyes and her smile, and then I'm like, okay, I see what's going on here. <laughs> so, John, I got to ask you that question. Mm -hmm. What would you say to these brothers out here of ghosting our sisters? Man, just just be 100. Just keep it, you know, you're not going to lose nothing. You know, you're not going to, nothing's going to happen to you. Well, hopefully nothing's going to happen to you. I mean, <laughs> you're not, yeah. You know, crazy. But yeah, just keep it 100. I'm like, yeah, I've been married for a while. Me and my wife have been together for 12 years. So I, I've been off the, the scene for a minute. And last time I was on the scene, we just let them know, look, I don't think it's going to work. And I feel like it's just easier, smoother. People can kind of move on with their lives, you know, um, but yeah, just just be one hundred. You know, treat them like how you want. I don't think any dude wants to be ghosted either. No. You know, that's, that's you no, know, that's we have pride. You know, we're gonna take that person. We're like, wait a minute, <laughs> <laughs> you know, how much? You know, going at least text me back. <laughs> I'm gonna start with you first, Diara, and you, John. What do you want the audience to take away from this? Because I enjoyed what I saw. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I I am really big on entertaining. I really want people to be thoroughly entertained. I want people, I mean, you know, I'm a mom. John and I, our boys are two days apart, right? They're both three. And at the end of the day, you have that one hour to sit down with your spouse or your partner or by yourself and watch something and drink a glass of wine. And I want it to be engaging. I want it to be funny. I want you to have something to talk about with your girlfriends over brunch. So that's the very first thing. If people get, um, like John is saying, a little more um, invested in these portraits of people, mm -hmm. of these Detroiters, that would be really a beautiful thing, too, because I did try to craft these characters like onions where there's, you know, more and more to peel back and hopefully reveal about the human experience. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I piggyback on that, you know, entertainment is what we do, you know, so first and foremost, you know, and be entertained, you know, just enjoy seeing uh, this beautiful black woman on the show, leading it, you know what I'm saying, creating it, you know, uh, and then all of these other beautiful uh, melanated people, you know, <laughs> on our screen, gracing it and doing it justice, you know what I'm saying, and then see yourself in these characters and then talk about it, you know, tweet about it, you know, um, have fun with it, you know, at the end of the day, it's all entertainment. So hopefully nobody will walk away uh, feeling too uh, specific about it. Did we? Been talking about BTS Plus, Diara yeah. from Detroit. All I want to know, Diara. Diara. That's the other thing I want people to take away from the show. Diara, the, the how to pronounce my name. Diara. So Diara. Okay, Diara. Thank you. Like Diara yeah. with the D. Yeah, there you go. Diara. <laughs> I just want to know: Does uh, Mofo's Chicken do they do Grubhub? A door dash. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, maybe that'll be my new business venture. We have to get a real mofos going in every city in America, every shopping mall in America. It, it's not real. It's so funny because there's a restaurant in Detroit called that used to be called Mr. Fofos, uh -huh. which is what I had named it after. And someone got confused and put mofos on the on the scout sheet, and it was just mofos from then on. I enjoyed that. Great, it was really good. Thank you both for joining us. Diara, correct. Diara, thank you. Detroit. <laughs> thank you both for joining us on Morning Blend. Thank we you. appreciate you for having us. Thank you.